Back in Counter-Strike 1.6, frag movies, so highlight movies surrounding players or general compilation movies of, of pro players, were one of my favorite things about the entire community. I mean, what was so great about them was, <clears throat> towards the latter days of 1.6 especially, there were lots and lots created, but there was a level of quality to them in general, especially if they were around pro players, where people would spend months working on one movie, and sometimes they work in collaboration with the player, and they'd be deciding what clips to use, and because there was, in theory, it was harder to make them back then, and they weren't released as often in general as, as clips and movies are now, there was also a degree to which people put more artistry into them, and really tried to craft a, a unique movie, or make it very polished, as opposed to just getting a movie out there about a popular player right now. And they were, as I said, one of my favorite things about the community and about Counter-Strike in general, actually, because what I loved was when a good movie came together, so I had a good scene, whether it's one I've seen, I've actually seen before or not, and it combines with the music in a particular fashion and the buildup of the other clips, it creates these epic, euphoric feelings surrounding Counter-Strike, something we love anyway, something we like to watch anyway, we enjoy watching. It, it, it's a way to peak your emotional investment and the way that, and the aesthetic enjoyment of it. In the same way as in a movie, it's not just the great action and the way the story's unfolding and a key story point, it's the way the music behind it's layered over and the shots are layered over to make it, the experience on your consciousness, on your being itself, more powerful, more potent. And so this is what frag movies did. And I mean, I always thought of the, a great frag movie sequence in a similar fashion to the reason why I actually wasn't surprised that 90s trance music got quite big in the UK. Now, obviously, one of the reasons it got big is so many people went to like uh, Ibiza, Mallorca, et cetera, and went clubbing and took drugs. So they had an extra reason to feel an attachment to the music. But that type of music, the really good euphoric type trance, the drop in it, the buildup is so much that the drop has a feeling inside your brain where it feels amazing. In that instant, it's like the, the climax of something that's been building up and then as a result, you get this release mentally that, that feels amazing. So I, I always thought amazing frag sequences are like that anyway because you know how hard that is and you, it's so enjoyable to watch like Forrest kill three people. So then when you add the right music and the shots and you have a very polished aspect to it, then it just looks incredible. And in, that, and in an instant, you feel the sense that you don't get just watching a normal match in itself, even when it happened in the match. I mean, as a result of how much I enjoyed frag movies, I, I probably watched more frag movies in Counter-Strike than anyone else. I used to even curate them and constantly add them to the website I worked for, SK Gaming. I used to do articles called Gaming at the Movies where I'd review movies and I would bring back old classics and I would try and kind of keep the history of these movies alive and introduce new people to these movies. Now the problem is, I mean, what is the title? The Frag Movie Problem. The problem is I don't get this in CSGO. So what I'll do first of all is I'll give you a few examples of movies from Counter-Strike 1.6 that, that are giving what I'm, what I'm talking about here. So I'll give you one here. One's called Nothing But Headshots. It's the famous movie surrounding Jordan Nothing Gilbert, the evil geniuses player, North American rifler. And it was made by a guy called High Five. And this is a movie where it's not even the type of music I usually like, but it's just so raw and visceral and and in a way angsty, but it just kind of fits with how brutal the action is. Because this is a great movie for an example of where they basically only took absolutely fire clips, like really sick aces, headshots on almost everything, as the net title suggests, ridiculous shit. Now, some of it's online and some of it's just like, I mean, a lot of it's just like POVs. And I think some is even from scrims, but it's, it's a nuts movie. It's absolutely insane. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's really brutal. Another good one would be one that actually was never released. It was leaked, though, and it would have been one of the all-time great movies, which is Final Reality 2, which is a Shaguar movie, and it was by Reflex, the guy who made Ruination. <clears throat> and this, actually, I think would have been the best movie of all time because it was a top-level, elite-level, world-class pro player who saved all of his practice clips against the best teams in the world he was practicing against. Then years later, was going to release this movie that would have all these insane clips and no scopes and super... And the quality, the production value on it was really high, and the editing was very good, and the music... Was was good, it kept, they kept the pace up, but it was fairly inoffensive. You couldn't really get annoyed with it in the way that you could with some of like the Swedish metal that people put on, on movies in latter years. Forest, 
by Athid. This is actually a latter day movie where this guy just collected all the naughtiest forest clips. And he tried to make it not like a really curated short movie that's just a few scenes. He tried to make it all the craziest clips with like a good drum and bass, I think it was drum and bass, soundtrack to it. And the editing's pretty solid and it's all on point. So this is a really good example of like just the best frags you can get. And then a classic one that combines like, it's quite old school, so the frags aren't as good as the ones that I've just suggested now. But just the way it's put together as a movie is a multimedia project as an object it is really beautiful still it's still one of the best movies in my opinion this is dkt2 by destruct and this was about the pro player destruct who formerly was an unreal tournament pro but then became a counter-strike pro in the mid-2000s and this movie just combines like a good kind of like big beat soundtrack with pretty solid editing the quality is not that great the production because it was, did come out in like 2003 but the frags in general are good some of them aren't insane but at least you can understand like one frag and it's a the kitty sequence so these movies all capture the feelings i'm talking about and kind of like the the quality or the effort put in that, that i'm talking about in this sense and the problem is there's some reasons which actually are behind why CSGO doesn't do this. Some of it comes from CSGO itself. Some of it comes from the culture that, that we now ha live in as a subculture, as a, as a, as a Counter-Strike community. And some of it comes to do with the technology. So first and foremost, <coughs> when 1.6 movies existed or had their heyday, there was no YouTube. Back then, there wasn't a video place that you could go and stream the videos. That's why when someone made like a Frag Movies website initially it got quite popular and that died out because someone couldn't afford the hosting. There wasn't an ability to go and watch these movies online. You had to download the movie. So as a result, the movie came out, you heard about it. And as a result, think about it, you haven't seen many other movies because there's only so many movies and you have to download all of them. So you can't just link it to someone. If you say to someone, hey, watch this movie, he has to be willing to download that file for 20 minutes, an hour, half, an hour and a half, whatever it might take. And so people would link on FTPs. And when the movie came out, that would also make the movie being released an event. You heard, hey, there's a new movie out, Destruct 2. Everyone's going to be going, downloading it, watching it together. It becomes like when everyone used to watch television shows together on a week and then they discuss it. It becomes an event in that particular sense. It's not happening all the time. It's not like someone can just release to YouTube and they can just get out there or not or get drowned out by the signal noise. <clears throat> also, until almost like CSGO days, some people still made movies where because people were on old CRT monitors and it used to take a lot of power to make really high quality movies, people used to actually still make movies that had quite a low res. And the problem was in the old days, low res movies, when you uploaded them to YouTube, didn't work properly. That's one of the reasons why I used to upload a lot of the movies myself to the SK Gaming site. And so one of the problems here is when you uploaded these low res movies, the YouTube encoder, which was never that great back in the day, used to make the movie like big enough to fit the screen, but the quality would get degraded. So it wouldn't be as good as if you downloaded it. So again, just linking people wasn't as good. And a lot of the movies didn't look as good on YouTube. There's also the fact that because there wasn't YouTube and these movies had to be downloaded and created especially, and people weren't just making clips, highlight clips of all the frags. In general, you had to watch the demo to get all the best frags and to know what happened in a match and to know the best things that happened in that game and, and what, what one of the best players has done. Whereas what's changed now is, <clears throat> Now, you don't, no one watches the demo. In fact, they don't even release the POV demos from many events. No one even watches the GoTV demo except for people studying the game in general. So what happens now is everyone sees the highlights or everyone watches the stream or everyone goes and watches the stream VOD over or they hear about it or they're watching a frag movie later. So it's made it so that now there's a lot more access from the average people to most of the clips and getting to see more of it rather than seeing it live or going and watching the demo, which is a big distinction. And not everyone went and watched the demo. <clears throat> As a result, frag movies were a big deal when they came out. There also were no streams back then. I mean, in the early 2000s, there weren't streams in this particular sense. And as a result, there was no easy way to clip, like where you make the clip or the old odd shots and all that. So there was no way to do that. So people weren't just taking a clip of a crazy little fragment, getting it out there. You weren't just seeing it on Twitter. You weren't seeing it instantly in the community. So as a result, if you didn't go back and watch that VOD over or watch that demo over, you just missed the clip. And until it came up in a movie, you just wouldn't see it. So the access to the information just wasn't as great. And as a result, in 1.6, when movies came out, even if they featured tournament footage, everyone hadn't seen every highlight. I mean, I'd seen a lot because I'd watched a lot of frag movies and a lot of demos, but there would always still be unseen shit, something in a match that you didn't watch or something in a domestic match that the guy played. There's also the fact that, and this is a big problem in, in CSGO movies, is that you used to get private POVs. So they'd either film themselves in scrims or in smaller lands, and they'd have access to a demo that was better quality than the HLTV demo. 
And so it'd look a lot better as a POV and you'd get unseen footage you'd never seen before. You almost never get that now in frag movies in CSGO because these are creators who aren't working with the player and don't have access to the player's demos and don't have any way to give you any unseen footage. They can only work with what's in the public domain and they're doing as best they can with that, but as a result, they can't create something like nothing but headshots or Final Reality, which were bonkers. Some of the best clips you've ever seen, but that's the point you had never seen them before. That's what made this movie even more special. <coughs> I also think an issue is that the culture surrounding frag movies is not as big, which will sound weird, but I mean relative to the size of the community. As in, now it's bigger in as much as you can get more views. You can get 300,000 views on a YouTube video, and as a result, you could make a few hundred dollars just for doing that, whereas before you wouldn't have made any money and no one would have paid you at all. The problem is, like I said, when a big movie came out, it was an event. It was a big deal when it came out. Everyone in the community for that day, for that week, would be focused on it and would be downloading it and telling each other about it. Now when movies come out, I do my best to link them on, on Twitter or retweet or upvote on Reddit, but in general, some of them don't even make the front page. Some of them just get up and get lost, and it's very hit and as to how they do. So they might still do well on YouTube, but they're not getting out to the whole community, the whole competitive, the whole esports, the whole CS community in that same way. And so as a result, because there's so many clips and it's hit and miss as to whether they get out and so many are created around the same player, you get this problem where, and I do this myself sometimes, you, wa you watch the movie and unless it's a fantastic movie, unless you really are like, who made this? I want to see more of this. You don't click on the guy's YouTube channel and you don't subscribe and you don't find his name out. So you just see the movie and you go, well, it's pretty sick. And then you forget who created it. So as a result, you're not following creators in the same way. Whereas in 1.6, I knew who the big creators were. If that new guy's coming up with a new movie, I'm going to watch it because it's his movie, not because of even who the player's about. In the same way as if Christopher Nolan comes out with a movie, I'm going to watch it because it's a Christopher Nolan movie. It doesn't matter who's in it or what the storyline is. I'm going to watch it because I know his past stuff was so good that he's kind of got. He's got, a, he's got a blank check to make another movie and I'll at least give it a try. It used to be like that with the big movie makers, the really, really good ones. So unfortunately, there's far less fame in that particular sense and you can penetrate less deeply into the community. There's also way too many low effort movies. So because people know you can get a few hundred thousand views from just getting on Reddit, or just having recommended videos on, a, on someone else's Kenny S clip, there are a million Kenny S movies. And a million of them all feature like 80 to 70, 70 to 80% of the same clips and edited in not a particularly high effort manner, or high production value manner, just simply edited to way other. And so the problem is the community of frag movies, the culture around the frag movies in CSGO is just to watch the frags. It's just a way to watch the frags that you, you're not going to go back and watch the demo. You're not going to load up the stream. So you just want to see the frags again. Now that's all well and good. It's enjoyable to see the frags. They're obviously the meat of the movie, <clears throat> but the really good movies were the ones that put in extra effort to, to craft something and have different camera shots and build it up and then time the music tempo and then have editing in with it and then even pick out which shots to ignore and then which ones to put in so that the whole quality of the product was incredibly high. The problem with that is if someone else has already put out nine Kenny S movies before you finish your high effort movie and they're all low effort ones that, sell that show the same kills with just okay music and okay editing and they've had success, it's going to put people who haven't clicked on your movie off clicking on it at this point in time. People are just going to think, oh, I've already seen that, I've seen those clips. And even when they, they do watch a movie, it's going to unfortunately reduce the impact that the movie would have because you've seen all the clips and you've seen them all a million times over, in fact. So the signal noise of shit to the, to the core carrier signal of, of quality is unfortunately in, enormous now in a way it wasn't before. I mean, there actually weren't 10 shit for, forest movies in 1.6, believe it or not. Despite how popular a game it was, despite the fact the guy played for six years. So another aspect around frag movies comes from CSGO. And this is where one of the areas where I absolutely do not blame the CSGO movie makers at all. There's nothing they can do with this, unfortunately. Is that in 1.6, when you got really crazy highlight kills, they looked more spectacular in the game. Go back and watch those movies I told you about and look when someone headshots someone with a deagle or when someone ops someone as they're jumping out. They look more spectacular. The way the body moves, like famously the headshot, like if you deagle headshot someone, their head smashes back and their front leg flies up and their arms go back. This looks insane when you do it because it really gives you that feeling that the bullet's like and just goes right through as if you were like firing it through like a concrete block. When you kill someone with a deagle headshot, in CSGO, the guy basically just like falls over like that. This is exactly the problem 
that happened in CS Source. This was why when CS Source came out, it's not just that the game wasn't as good, it wasn't as 1.6, but when you watched highlight movies, there was never a reason to get super excited and go, oh, I've got to play this game. Because you watched it and it was people spraying and then the guy would get hit in his head and then the guy would just like go to sleep on the floor. So as a result, you're like, well, was that really that sick? And so even though in your brain, you know, it is sort of sick, it doesn't have the same impact. It doesn't have the same feel. You know, it doesn't work, it doesn't work the same way. So this is one of the big problems. I actually think that's something that they could do to fix CSGO for frag moves. They'll never do this, by the way, because what the fuck does Valve care about frag moves? But I would literally do these things. I would have it so that a headshot that's like a, a headshot for one of the bullets that does a lot of damage. So let's say a bullet that does 70 or more damage to the head. I think when you get hit by that, it should be like that. You should get like smashed backwards like this. I think that if someone sprays like a whole bunch of bullets into you, then... When the model dies, if, if it dies from the spray, then the, the, the model should be sort of like thrown up against the wall, and like slide off or something. I would do all these things. This is how I would make it sick. Because if you had all these, now imagine the same frag movie where NBK is sat in banana B site and they're running through the arch and there's a smoke down and then he sees him over the top of the spray. And when he sprays him, it's not just people falling over. They'd be like falling this way and, and throwing backwards. It would look insane. It would feel a lot cooler. That's my opinion anyway. Especially headshots should be a lot more spectacular in CSGO than they are at the moment. And so the other thing is, yeah, this, is, this actually means one of the solutions, in my opinion, which unfortunately people aren't going to want to hear who are frag movie makers in CSGO, is that the only way to really fix some of this, I mean, you can't do any of the CSGO fixes, but the only way to fix the state of frag movies is actually to spend more time crafting your movie, which unfortunately is exactly what you're not going to want to do, because if you're trying to make a living off it, you're going to want to create like okay movies with a decent amount of effort and then lots of short clips. And the problem is to create a, a better movie, that's the only way to separate yourself, is to create a really high quality movie, have a concept behind it and have really high level shit. Because now we need even more of a premium to be on amazing work and not just finding, you know, the old clips that everyone has. If that happens, make your movie half long, make it four minutes long, but have a few clips that like, yeah, that people have shown, but show them in your own way and have you add your own flair. Then add in a few that people maybe didn't get because they were too lazy and just went for the big ones and make your movie that way. I think there's still room for that. Unfortunately, it's going to be hard to get famous for all these reasons I've talked about and to get a lot of impact and have the same impact they used to have back in 1.6. But this is a way to elevate the frag movies as opposed to them just being good for Rags with some good music and decent editing and then just released on YouTube. I mean, I'll, t I'll give a few examples of some movies I did like in CSGO, but I have to say a lot of them are more like just the frags and the music. N not that many of them have like really high level editing in them. So, okay, there's one here. That was a movie about Flamey. And this just shows you how insane Flamey is. Like the sheer number of like ridiculous headshot rounds and aces this guy has. Absolutely nuts. That's why it's so maddening to watch him play where he doesn't just dominate every game. This one here is called Shocks God Mode. It's by uh, Phoenix or Phoenix. I don't know how he's supposed to say his name. That's another thing you could do. If you're going to make an alias in gaming, make it something people pronounce. He's actually got a few movies on his channel that are very good. This one is Shocks, obviously going in God Mode, just going as you ham. It's, I mean, you've all seen the Shock clips before, but this is one of the better videos edited together of it. And also generally he uses drum and bass, which I enjoy. This one, in terms of a, con a, a concept movie, is a good one, which is this one up here called Team Solomid Ascend, which was by Frank Garnet Welsh. And this was one where he tried to tie in some frag movies, but with some build-up and with some, like, for example, he uses, like, different color palettes and different shots and, and the music to build it up and make more out of those clips than just have them be clips in a long movie. So he tried something different with this one, which I enjoyed in, in a different manner than I would just a mad fragging movie. There is a forest one that's pretty good by Silent. It was called Forest El Pistolero. So it's classic forest pistol clips. I think this came out last year, but obviously he's done a lot in his career. And uh, a guy called Fracarts, I assume he must be from the Netherlands, did one and his one called Skadoodle versus Guardian. He has many of these on his channel where it's like two good players who are like similar skill set against each other. So this one's just like two great opus. And this is back in the summer, late summer of 2015. So he's shown like the prime of these two players, at least back then when they were going head to head. And these are all good examples of good frag movies. So I want to show that there are good frag movies out there. Brilliant. Um, but... In fact, actually, from making this video, I think what I'll do is I'll even make some kind of separate content, either a video or an article, that'll be like 1.6 frag movies so people can enjoy them, and do CSGO frag movies so people can enjoy them, so I can highlight the ones that I think are very good and give people a sense. In fact, maybe that's something I could do, do, do my own kind of collection of good frag movies so I could get them out there in the scene, because I do feel like this is a problem, because it was one of the coolest parts of the scene, and while I, I admit, yeah, there are CSGO aspects that make it not as cool, 
I, I, it just makes me sad that we live in an era where it's so easy to get the movies out there and so easy to put them on stuff like YouTube and to make direct money back and in theory to build a following if it was done the right way. But the community doesn't seem to appreciate them the same way. The movies seem to be more low effort and low quality. People aren't trying to create works of art, which is which really you did see back in the day. It was quite spectacular, even though they were just low-level multimedia projects. And it's kind of saddening because CSGO as a game is huge, and I wish the frag movie aspect was still there as much because it was one of my favorite things about 1.6.